I want to say something. You know, I'm defending because that's my role today to defend the two quarterback system. It feels like trying to sell you a used Buick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying. I'm it's like, but, but Kyle Shanahan put the Buick together. I know this has never worked, but this is a, a great, this is a project of, of a master. Okay. Well, I'm open minded. It might be really fun, but I just feel like it's, I feel like it's a, just delaying the development of the most important player in the franchise. And my only question is, wh why is this the best way to develop Trey? And isn't that the most important thing? Okay. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Is Kyle, no, has Kyle been effective so far at developing Trey? I don't think so. Why? I mean, he's been focusing Trey on working on his uh, weaknesses. That's one way to do it. I don't think he's improved much in the pocket since he's been here. I don't think he's become a more confident quarterback. I think he's actually losing confidence as he gets more, more exposed to playing time. Uh, and then in this recent dress rehearsal his playing time with the starters was handing off I don't think that's really it doesn't show that you're confident in him it shows we don't trust you to throw the ball and it's not improving him when he does get to throw it's with backups who can't block for him or catch his passes I felt like a lot of what he did this offseason was a waste of time uh you know I I would have to agree with you that it didn't seem like there was an urgency <laughs> to develop him and Iggy Part of, oh, I guess we're criticizing Kyle now, which is not infrequent with us. Part of the reason that Trey Lance got hurt is because of how Kyle Shanahan has used him. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, when I questioned Kyle after the first preseason game, when Lance got sacked four times in one half in a preseason game and said, why couldn't you have you know, rolled him out of the pocket more? And he said, because that's what we wanted to do. I mean, the reason I asked is I'm saying you're going to get him hurt. This is football. Even if the game doesn't count, those guys can't block. You're going to get him hurt in games that don't count while you're trying to get him to work on his weaknesses. Was it worth it? I would say no. And I thought that answer was kind of flippant and not addressing what ended up happening two weeks later. So let's be real clear about this. You asked a pertinent question. He blew you off. Yes. I use the uh, adjective snotty. Yes. Snotty. And your question turns out to be relevant. You were concerned that the kid would get hurt not rolling out and playing behind backups. It Their backup offensive line is really not that good. And in fact, he has been hurt. Uh -huh. He has a broken finger, uh -huh. um, a broken finger. Um, he's going to miss at least seven days. Yeah. We don't know what the effect will be. And I may very well win the bet on default because he may not be game ready in Detroit, which is now less than fewer than two weeks away because Kyle – didn't think deeply about the fair question that you asked him and didn't think deeply when he was alone and say, look, I don't want to get this kid hurt in the preseason. Oops. Now I did. Oops. Now I did. Oh, that's football. Tough luck. It's like, you see, you saw that he was really struggling in the pocket. I mean, he was out of his depth. You saw that they couldn't block for him. And you saw that his receivers were dropping his balls. Get him the hell out of the pocket. You drafted him because he's so good at play action, not because just of the zone read, that's part of it, but he's so good under center, turning his back, rolling left and right, throwing on the run. It's an element you don't have with Jimmy Garoppolo. And so in, instead of letting him show those things and actually building confidence, winning over the team, taking the job, you make him do all the stuff he's not good at. And oh my God, he gets hurt. Now it's not a serious injury, we don't think, but this is what happens. It was predictable. Also, it makes the kid feel bad about himself. Yeah, I'm not good at it. To me, when I was a teacher, I always tried to boost people up. We would talk about things they needed to improve in their writing, but it was always, this is very promising. Let's do these 1,000 things to your two-page yeah. story. Yes. And, and it was always positive. And I, I you know, I, I learned that way. Uh, I think it's how people learn if if you get if you can encourage them and all he did was to sort of bring him down saying you know what it was like Iggy when I saw Trey Lance playing he was just handing the ball off he looked to me like a turnstile yeah. at the New York subway to go through a turnstile turn, turn turn yeah. yeah you went all of that that's and, what you're ready for Trey that's what I think of you and if I use a boxing analogy which I often did do it's like having a fighter one hand tied behind his back
for the entire preseason, Trey, you you can't do this, this, and this. You have to play Jimmy Garoppolo style of football with the backups and and be better than him, and not get hurt. Yeah, so it's like, oh, you you got a big left hook, you can't throw that. You can't. You got to go only right hand crosses, and it was like, and you can play southpaw. You could throw a southpaw jab, but that's it. And you got to be better than this guy who can use both his hands. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's what happened. But this is what Kyle does. I think what he likes to do is pr- make a decision too early, not let it play out. Doesn't I mean, instead of saying, you know what, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see what happens. And I'll make the decision at the end. He comes in a training camp saying, well, Jimmy's better than him. There's no way Lance is going to be ready. So I don't even need to see it. I know already. I don't even need to see it. So we're going to give Jimmy all the reps with the starters. And when Lance does play with the starters, we'll let him run. Well, he'll be Taysom Hill. And then next year, I've decided that's when he'll be ready because I know. That's my are, you, are you saying that? You think in in fundamentally important ways, Kyle Shanahan is not open minded. Yes, and this is why I feel like he's a great member of a team. He's a great member of a franchise. He's such an asset. His system is fantastic. Every every team wants that system. I don't see him as a front man in a lot of ways. I'm sorry. Let's uh, prove me wrong, Kyle. It's here five. Deve- I don't want to get. So I got one more thing I want to say. This thing with Josh Rosen is small. But Josh Rosen was awful here and seemed depressed. He leaves, signs with Atlanta, is there for one week, plays really well, makes a team. Their coach over there revived Ryan Tannehill's career. That's a skill. Jim Harbaugh used to pump up his quarterback's confidence. Kyle has a great system, but I don't know if he has that skill that other people have. So we'll see. Which, which is what we called before is mentoring. Mentoring. This is his mentoring. Chance. Mentoring. Yeah. You, you're dealing with young men, men in their sometimes in their early 20s. Well, 21. Trey Lance is 21. 21. And part of what, what I've said is my professor at Stanford said, <laughs> uh, directing a doctoral dissertation, in this case, developing a quarterback, is 90% psychological handholding. Right. Now, and maybe, Kyle refused to do that. And maybe Mike never held his hand psychologically. Right. I can tell you this, Iggy. My dad held my hand. Right. I held your hand. Well, I think it's fair to say that you model your mentoring after your mentors. I do. It's your yes. style. And yes. Kyle's mentors were his dad, Gary Kubiak, John Gruden. John well, Gruden doesn't give psychological handholding. In fact, one of our main issues with John Gruden is exactly what we're talking about. Yes. Relentless negativity. And yelling. He yells yelling. at he yells at people. Yeah, Kyle curses. Uh, I, I've never been around. He Kyle. doesn't yell, I don't think, but I know he curses a lot. And it's you know, you can it's, you gotta take it. I curse a lot and not on maybe here. maybe Bill Walsh did too. What the F? What is this? What do you did. think? Yeah, no, that kind of stuff. He hated that people to know it, but yeah, maybe he did curse a lot, which was one of the most attractive. He said the F word just about every sentence, and I loved him for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's our take on we got we got more to say about Kyle, but that's it with this uh in in, in regards to Trey Lance's development. Trent says, Lowell, what's your take on the spreadsheet? Do you know what he's talking about? What? What's your take on the spreadsheet? The infamous spreadsheet from, from forget about it. Forget about it. If you don't know, forget about it. It's he from have, another, is it from another writer? Yeah. I have no interest. No interest. How about that? No interest. Paco Simbad says, how much better would this team be with Kyle as OC and Sala as head coach? Boy, that's a fantastic question. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think it would be better. Yeah, I can't. I can't say that it's never crossed my mind. I always felt that Robert Sala was such an asset that he was essentially doing a lot of leadership roles from behind and not taking credit for it. Letting Kyle be the front hand front man, but filling in all the gaps. Uh, And now he's gone. So it'll be interesting because he has such a good sense for decision making. He's so mature. Uh, I don't know if he has his system is as good as Kyle's, but uh, he might be. I think he's a natural leader in every way in every way. Good question. Be interesting. Hey, if if things go bad here, let's say things go bad here and Kyle has a couple more losing seasons, gets fired, and everyone says, you know, he's just not head coach material. He's a coordinator. He can go back and meet up with uh, Sala in New York. Yeah, he could be the Jets coordinator. He could be the Jets coordinator. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, I think that would be a good fit for him. (laughs) 